happening right now. Rural Metro problems persist. A year ago, we told you about problems swirling around Rural Metro. To new tonight, the ambulance providers back in hot water as we investigate complaints leading to a program suspension. Then the abandoned baby. Tonight, a look at the New York City mother who left her infant on a subway platform and what police say was going on in her mind. And a severe storm watch tonight. We're keeping a close eye on potential storms around central New York. Chief Meteorologist Wayne Mahar will tell you where you'll need the umbrella and whether any of these storms could cause damage in your neighborhood. From CNY Central, this is NBC3 News at 5. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to NBC3 News at 5. I'm Megan Coleman. Matt is off tonight. We are tracking more severe weather throughout central New York right now. So will the storms hit your backyard, and do we expect any damage left behind? Get the latest now from Chief Meteorologist Wayne Mahar, who's on the weather deck for us tonight. Wayne. Hey there, Megan. Uh, we're into a uh, weather alert mode again right now because we're talking about severe thunderstorm watches and a number of severe thunderstorm warnings. Let's get right to it. Let me tell you what the warnings are right now. Then we're going to detail everything on live triple Doppler radar right down to the second. First of all, severe thunderstorm warnings just in the past few minutes have been issued for uh, Cayuga County, Oswego County, Ontario County, Wayne County. Also, severe thunderstorm warnings for Seneca County, uh, Steuben County, and Yates Counties. All of these severe thunderstorm mornings go until 545 this evening and you can bet that there are going to be more because we've got a lot of activity going on. Now here's a look at what's going on with live triple Doppler radar right now and you can see what we're talking about now. The watch box that you see right now that is a watch in effect until 8 o'clock this evening but you can see this large area of showers and storms right now covering a good part of the uh, Finger Lakes region westbound. We're going to zoom on in first of all and you can see what's going on. Several strong cell right now running from around Rochester heading south and southwest we're down to near Geneseo other strong cells right now out to the east of uh, Rochester eastern and central parts of Wayne County heading on down into a uh, central parts of Oswe of uh, Seneca County and uh, this area is also with us all moving up to the north and east we're also focusing in on this strongest cell right here this appears to be the strongest storm right now in central and eastern parts of Wayne County you can see the timeline on where these storms should move. We're talking about uh, areas like uh, Fairhaven by about uh, what's that about 522 or so and uh, Oswego want to get on up into the 530 mark this storm heading northeastward up towards you. Uh, also another fairly strong cell down here just to the southwest of Romulus. This is going to head northeast bound uh, getting into around Auburn by about to 520 or so. Any of these storms can certainly produce gusty winds and large hail. Also keep in mind too that these are only the scattered storms in advance of the large line of storms that's eventually going to clear and move on through all of central New York between 6 and 8 o'clock this evening. So stay tuned. We'll be updating throughout our newscast and of course on Twitter and on Facebook and also when you're on the road you want to keep track of what's going on you can check it out with our mobile app and you can download that at cnycentral.com. Thank you, Wayne. A look at the CY Central Facebook page right now on the iPad. The details on the watches and warnings that have been issued, as well as a look at live triple Doppler radar. We encourage you to post your pictures as the storms blow through your neighborhood. And of course, if you have any damage in your backyard, be sure to post those on our Facebook page tonight. Tonight, the weather is to blame for canceling a benefit concert for the victims of a deadly tractor trailer crash in Ithaca. The Ithaca Commons disaster claimed the life of a young mother and injured several others. 27 year old Amanda Bush was killed when the tractor trailer plowed through Simeon's restaurant. The benefit was scheduled for next Tuesday from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Pavilion at Stewart Park in Ithaca. One year ago, we first told you about complaints surrounding Rural Metro's recertification program that led to it being placed on probation. Tonight, our Jim Canyon is tracking new developments as he investigates Rural Metro. Jim. Well, you know, Megan, the big question tonight is why would Onondaga County hire a training director from a company that was placed on probation by the state health department? Well, now the county's program has been suspended and 35 paramedics are forced to retake a refresher course or possibly lose their state certifications. Every day, paramedics aboard ambulances save countless lives. They're highly trained to perform what's called advanced life support and are certified as paramedics by the state health department. In order to maintain that certification, paramedics are required to take refresher courses. 
Recently, some 35 paramedics received a letter from the state health department informing them that the last refresher course they took through Onondaga County's Emergency Medical Services Program has been invalidated after an investigation into a complaint. And this is just strictly from our paramedic refresher class. Emergency Management Commissioner Kevin Wisely explains what went wrong. They did find some deficiencies in our paperwork and how we, um, how our contracted instructor handled some of the paperwork and the coordination. They found some deficiencies in the actual coordination of the final skills exam. We've obtained a copy of the letter that went out to the paramedics. It states, after a thorough investigation and audit of the course records, it was determined that the final practical skills examination did not meet minimum requirements. That exam requires paramedics to perform actual life-saving techniques. As a result of the investigation, the State Health Department has suspended Onondaga County's paramedic refresher program and ordered the 35 paramedics to retake the exam on August 9th at Upstate Medical Center. According to Commissioner Wisely, some 35 paramedics will be forced to retake this refresher course in order to maintain their state certification. And it includes 13 paramedics here at Rural Metro. And this is not the first time that Rural Metro has been in trouble over its paramedic recertification program. Last year, we exposed allegations of misconduct and fraud within the ambulance service. The state health department investigated, and while it found no fraud, it did find widespread problems in the way Rural Metro runs its paramedic recertification program, and it ordered 26 paramedics to take immediate refresher courses. It also placed Rural Metro's training program on probation. Despite all this, Onondaga County hired Rural Metro's training director to administer the refresher course that has just been invalidated. We hired a contract instructor. Um, the, the instructor happens to also be employed by Rural Metro uh, Medical Services. Were you aware at the time that, uh, that, that Rural Metro had been on probation for uh, their uh, recertification program of paramedics? Uh, no, that, that's outside of our purview. This afternoon, Rural Metro issued a statement. This class was not formally affiliated with Rural Metro Medical Services in any way, other than having some students in attendance who are employees. Now that statement from Rural Metro is in direct conflict with what we have uncovered. So we called and spoke to Rural Metro's spokesperson about the fact that its training director was actually working for the county. Well, she refused to answer the question and referred me back to the county. So Jim, if this refresher course was invalidated, is the public at any risk from, um, from paramedics that are poorly trained? Well, I asked Kevin Wisely that and he says no. He says every paramedic in the county has state certification and all are, in his, uh, in his opinion, are highly trained and capable of reforming uh, advanced life support. Jim Kenyon on the investigation for us tonight. Jim, thank you. Tonight, the Waterloo Village Justice, who claimed he was attacked with the lid of a toilet tank and strangled, now finds himself on the other side of the law. In December, we told you police found no credible evidence to prove the attack happened. And new tonight, we've learned Justice Roger Barto was indicted on charges of grand larceny, insurance fraud, official misconduct, and more. According to court documents obtained by NBC3 News, Barto lied about the attack and then collected benefits on the injuries. Authorities say he also stole gasoline from the Maple Grove Cemetery in Waterloo in the last year. You can read more about the charges by searching Roger Barto's name on our website, cnycentral.com. The owner of the Tebbs Smoke Shops chain in Syracuse will spend more than seven years behind bars now. John Tebbets pleaded guilty to possessing synthetic drugs with the intent to sell and money laundering. As part of his sentencing, Tebbets will now be required to undergo drug counseling. He owned 12 smoke shops in New York and Maine. He was arrested in 2012 as part of a nationwide crackdown on synthetic drugs. New information tonight about the New York City mother accused of abandoning her own baby on a subway platform. 20-year-old Frankia Dabbs is being questioned by police right now. This is the baby in question here. They say she pushed the baby's stroller onto the subway platform and left the child there alone. Investigators say the woman thought she was leaving the baby in a safe space. The baby is now being cared for by the Administration for Children's Services. 
An alert tonight about a rabid bat found in Tompkins County. Health officials are still looking for the three children who were exposed to a bat with rabies. The kids were playing with the bat at Montgomery Park in the village of Dryden last Monday between 1.30 and 2.30 in the afternoon. Officials are still trying to figure out who the girl is. She's about seven or eight years old, and there were two younger boys with her. They say the situation remains urgent because if rabies goes undetected, it could become deadly. Another rabid animal, this time a raccoon in Lafayette, testing positive for rabies. It was found around Route 20 between O'Connell and Berry Road. Health officials remind you to keep your children and pets away from unfamiliar animals, even if they seem friendly. If an animal acts really tired, has a hard time swallowing, or is foaming at the mouth, it may be rabid. This Thursday, there will be a rabies shot clinic at the Onondaga Nation Fire Department where you can protect your pets from rabies. It's from 2 to 4 on Route 11A in Nedro. Well, as the land bank continues to buy old, rundown homes in Syracuse, many are wondering what will happen to these houses. Coming up tonight, we'll tell you how the city will continue to use these houses even after they're torn down. And thousands of people in Japan rocked by a typhoon, a look at the destruction left behind. And tonight, we continue to be on the lookout for these severe storms around central New York. Chief Meteorologist Wayne Mahar is keeping a close eye on live triple Doppler radar as they inch closer to the Syracuse metro area right now. Don't forget to send your weather pictures to our CMY Central Facebook page up tonight with storms pushing into the region right now. Wayne, who's getting hit at the moment and where's it headed next? Well, right now, all the storms are out to the west of uh, Syracuse, Megan, but uh, we've got uh, scattered storms into the Finger Lakes from Wayne County down into the Finger Lakes, a big area of showers and storms to the western Finger Lakes into western New York, and that is all heading in towards central New York. Once again, let me update you on the current warnings right up to the minute. Then we're going to take a look at live triple Doppler radar, and you're going to be able to see for yourself where the storms are right this second and where they're going to. Right now, severe thunderstorm warnings are still up for Cuga County, Seneca County, Steuben, Yates Counties, uh, Oswego County, and uh, Wayne County until 545. Here's a look at what's going on right now with live triple Doppler radar. And you can see, uh, first of all, notice that uh, yellow outlined box. We've seen a lot of this over the past week or so. That'll be your severe thunderstorm watch that's in effect for most of the area until 8 o'clock this evening. Now, you can see this area of showers and storms working on in towards Syracuse, basically now from the Finger Lakes westbound on in through the Finger Lakes. And uh, we'll zoom on into a couple of areas. You can see right now where some of the heavier cells are like to the east of Rochester now. Western Wayne County, you got a heavier cell there with severe thunderstorm warnings. You got another heavier cell right there, central Cuga County, and a little tiny heavier cell now, uh, extreme southwestern parts of Cuga County. Let's uh, zero in on a couple of the stronger storms and see where they're headed to. And uh, we're looking at uh, this storm right here, the storm that uh, is in northeastern and central parts of uh, Wayne County right now near Walkett that is heading up to the north and east. You can see getting in towards Fairhead Haven by about 516, eventually heading up towards Mexico by about 545. Another cell that we're watching, and these cells that I'm pointing out, the possibility of large hail and damaging winds. Uh, this cell down here, just uh, in southwestern and uh, central parts of Ikeuka County right now, this cell is heading up to the northeast. We're talking about getting into around uh, Auburn by about uh, 516 or so. So that's only, well, it's just, just right about now. Eventually work its way on up towards a Baldwinsville. Uh, you can see the timeline right here and all the way down into uh, Hastings. This cell, all activity heading on up to the north and northeast. Overall, here is your severe thunderstorm. Watch any places in this area, we are certainly keeping an eye on the possibility of additional warnings and localized severe weather. This watch box continues until 8 o'clock this evening. All of this activity, same as yesterday, from the heat, humidity combined with this cold front coming in. This cold front is gradually going to work its way on through here, and it's going to be by us by morning. And behind this cold front, we're going to slowly be drying the atmosphere out. Now, there's still going to be enough moisture around tomorrow afternoon, especially. We'll probably pop up a couple of scattered showers, but the humidity will slowly start to fall. High pressure will slowly start to build on in, leading us on into probably some pretty good days on Thursday and Friday before we get to the weekend when some heat, humidity, and thunderstorms return again. So here's the way the forecast shapes up then, hour by hour then. For tonight, scattered showers, scattered thunderstorms, at least before midnight tonight, some of these could be strong, gusty, if not severe. 
Keep an eye tuned. Uh, bottom of your screen. Keep an eye on, uh, tw uh, on Twitter. Keep an eye on Facebook. We're all over all of this, letting you know of the latest on the warnings. Uh, by midnight, we're about 72 degrees. Then tomorrow, later on tonight, on into tomorrow morning, we're going to start to calm things down a little bit. Low tonight, 65 degrees. And here's that seven-day weather outlook for you. Tomorrow, clouds, sun, humidity slowly falling. Scattered showers will linger, 78. Thursday, partly sunny, just an isolated shower, 76. Friday, sunny, 81. Then a little more heat and humidity returns again over the weekend with a threat for some scattered thunderstorms. Here's a look at the Stanley Law Sky Watch then, overlooking the city of Syracuse from Adirondack Furniture. And right this minute, we are quiet, a bit of a gusty breeze, but showers and storms are on our doorstep. That's the latest from the weather outside. Thank you, Wayne. Several weeks ago, we told you about the Syracuse Land Bank. It's a program allowing the city to buy homes that are run down in hopes of revitalizing some of Syracuse's neighborhoods. Once the city buys the homes, many will be demolished. But what happens next? NBC3's Sarah Beth Ackerman found out the answer. Recycling and repurposing is the name of the game today. The landmark, along with potential other construction crews, will be making stops around Syracuse to visit vacant homes to deconstruct materials instead of tossing them in the landfill. It's a way to maximize the amount of materials from each of the homes. The executive director of the land bank, Caitlin Wright, says it's also a way to flourish the economy. Construction crews will be taking a tour of the city to see what materials they can reuse and repurpose. We're talking about materials like windows, doors, and even carpet. The very first thing we do is evaluate what kind of hazardous materials might be in the property, um, lead paint, asbestos, things like that. We're getting the asbestos all abated prior to the deconstruction contractors coming in. Um, and then they have to decide um, where these different materials are going to go. So uh, the next step that's going to happen after, uh, after we met this morning, they'll go out and start looking at these buildings and making an inventory of what materials are in there, and then coming up with their plan for where everything's going to go uh, once it comes out of the building. Now Wright says that there will be acquiring one thousand vacant homes in the city over a three year period and they're at a removal of 200 homes reporting in Syracuse. I'm Sarah Thackerman. If you like more information about the land bank, you can head on over to our website at cnycentral.com. Right now, thousands of people in Japan are recovering from a typhoon that ripped through Okinawa. 17 people were hurt in the storm. At least one person is reported missing. Even though the storm was downgraded from super typhoon status, it still had sustained winds of 100 miles per hour. Forecasters say the slow moving storm could cause even more damage. Nearly 600,000 people were advised to evacuate their homes. Well, even though it's illegal, many teens admit to drinking. Is your son or daughter one of them? Coming up tonight, what young adults are reading that may be causing them to drink? And tonight, parents in Utica react to the district's plan to extend the school day for hundreds of children. A look at how long kids would be in the classroom and whether parents are signing on to the plan. And right now, we continue to be on the lookout for those severe storms in and around central New York. Chief Meteorologist Wayne Mahar has his eyes on live triple drop of radar right now. Which areas could be hit the hardest? Don't forget, send your best weather photos to CMY Central's Facebook page. You're watching NBC3 News at 5. Welcome back to NBC3 News at 5. Here's your health checkup tonight. Underage drinkers are more likely to choose alcohol brands they see advertisements for. That's according to new research. Studies show the more young adults are exposed to alcohol ads, the more likely they are to drink. New research looks specifically at magazine ads and how they affect drinking habits. Researchers looked at data to see which age groups were exposed to alcohol ads and noticed the most popular alcohol brands among 18 to 20 year olds were the ones featured in the magazines they read. Tonight, health experts say it's not the food Americans eat that's causing the obesity epidemic, but rather a lack of exercise. Over the past 20 years, researchers noticed the number of consumed calories hasn't changed, but the number of people who aren't exercising is up 30%. Well, eczema can be itchy and uncomfortable, especially for kids who can scratch their skin until it bleeds. Now there's a simple, inexpensive, drug-free th therapy that's actually helping kids with severe cases. Erica Edwards reports. Little Lucy Karazim has suffered from severe eczema since she was a baby. 
The itching so intense, she'd rub her hands and face raw. When it was really bad, yeah, she'd scratch until she bled, and then you'd worry about infection. The Karism family tried different doctors and different medications, including powerful steroids, without significant relief, until they found wet wrap therapy offered at National Jewish Health in Denver. Improving that skin barrier is really critical. The kids soak in a lukewarm bath for about 20 minutes. Then doctors apply lotion or mild medicated creams to wet skin, wrap them in wet clothes. You put your foot in kick. Then add a dry layer of clothing. Love you. Oh. The kids stay in this cocoon-like state for two hours. Some have to repeat the process several times a day. We know that as that um, wet wrap therapy cools and dries out that for a lot of our patients it has an anti-itch or anti-pruritic effect uh, which is soothing to them. 72 kids in a study at National Jewish Health averaged a 70 percent reduction in symptoms. The effects lasted for at least a month. Now when it gets bad I know what to do and I just I, we're in a much better place. Wet wraps are not a cure for eczema but for some a soothing solution. Erica Edwards, NBC News. Tonight, plans are still in the works to build an amphitheater right here in central New York. Ahead at 6 tonight, how soon you can get a sneak peek of the new concert venue. And have you ever wondered if the food in your fridge is safe to eat? If the sell-by date expires, should you toss it or eat it? New recommendations tonight from the Cleveland Clinic teaching us the truth about food labels. And we continue to be on the lookout for those severe storms around central New York right now. Another live look at live triple Doppler radar. You can see they are now moving closer to Syracuse, where they head next when we come back. And don't forget. Well, it's yet another busy afternoon with another round of showers and thunderstorms and another round of watches and warnings. Here's a look at what's going on right now. Severe thunderstorm watches in effect for a large part of the area. That's that uh, yellow box that you see, and that's in effect until 8 o'clock this evening. And uh, we've got a number of severe thunderstorm warnings in effect, too. As a matter of fact, a warning has just been issued for northwestern parts of Onondaga County and a good chunk of uh, Cayuga and Seneca counties covered by a warning right now. And uh, these go until uh, 6 15 this evening. Here's a look at what's going on. Live tripled off the radar. Several strong to locally severe storms right now that we're watching. And uh, these cells that we're watching, in particular, this one right here, central and western parts of Wayne County to the east of Rochester. You can see that little rotation going on right there. Well, that indicates that there is rotation within that cell. And when you see that, when we're looking at this and we see this on triple Doppler radar looking inside of that storm. You know, that, that's just something that really is uh, is important to us as far as a rotating storm as to what could be next, okay? But we're just keeping an eye on this. But that particular cell right there is of importance to us. And we're looking at, there it is right there, is right now located out to the uh, west and southwest of SOTUS. And we're looking at uh, where is that storm headed? Well, we're taking that cell right there, projecting it out to the northeast at about 45 miles an hour. And that will put it into uh, SOTUS at uh, any any minute now, and if it keeps on in that direction, probably into our round Oswego, city of Oswego, by about 613. Another storm that we're watching doesn't have any rotation with it as of right now, but it is a strong to locally severe storm is this one down here in central parts of Cayuga County. This cell right here is heading off to the northeast at about 45 miles an hour, probably going to get into a skinny atlas at about 539. So that would be what about uh, maybe about five to six minutes from now. Uh, heads in that direction, continues up into Lysander and Baldwinsville by about 559, and eventually Cicero by about 6... 608 or so. Keep in mind this cell too could produce some large hail and damaging winds. The whole area of showers and storms will probably take the next three to four hours to sweep its way on through central New York and eventually head further east out through the Mohawk Valley. I'll be back with lots more. We'll update all the radar for you and the location of these storms. You can hear the thunder right now. That'll be coming up in another few minutes. Right now, some like to focus on education. Others are worried their children will be burned out. Parents in the Utica School District sound off on the superintendent's plan to make the school day longer for some students. A closer look at the plan and what it would mean for your children. And we're on the Waste Watch Trail tonight, tracking your tax dollars and how they relate to hurricane relief money. 20 months after Superstorm Sandy rolled through, parts of New Jersey are still waiting for funds to rebuild. We'll look at where your money is and isn't going. 
Then it's a question we've all asked ourselves as we open the fridge. You probably look at those expiration and sell by dates. A debate tonight about whether we should dump it out or take our chances. Coming up in our talk tonight, a look at the science behind those dates. We'll break down exactly what they mean. Well, you saw it first on NBC3 News this time last night. The Utica City School District now has a plan to extend the school day for hundreds of students starting in September. This afternoon, we sent our Alex Dunbar to find parents whose children will be affected by the plan. New at 530 tonight, he outlines what it means and gets their reaction. Utica School Superintendent hopes a longer school day will lead to better test scores. A $4.1 million grant will help extend the school day by an hour and a half at Donovan and John F. Kennedy Middle Schools, as well as Conklin, Kernan and Hughes Elementary Schools. Some parents like the focus on education, but are concerned their kids will be burned out by the end of an eight-hour day at school. I think, you know, that's a little bit too much on the kids from 9 to 5. I think that's a little bit too much. It's just a long I think that's day. really pushing it. The Utica School District plans to focus on English and math skills during the extended hours. The school board still needs to approve the plan, and the superintendent tells us they will have to consider options for parents who want their children to leave at the standard time. Some parents wanted more details before they commit to it. I think that is too much because they only have one, one program for lunch, and then they got to wait all that time before they get home and eat. Yeah. And so that would be, that's, they would be very agitated. Utica received one of the largest extended time grants in New York State. The money compensates teachers for the longer day. Kathy Sturgeon says her son is already tired at the end of a regular school day. She wishes the district had another option. I would rather they continue school through the summer because kids lose so much during the summer. So if they are looking for a way to boost test scores, stop doing summer breaks, but don't keep our kids until five, that's too late. And the Syracuse City School District is also hoping to extend hours at Franklin, H.W. Smith, Dr. Weeks, Dr. King Elementary Schools, and Lincoln Middle School. The district telling us late this afternoon they are still waiting to hear back from the state about funding for those extended hours for next year. All right, we have not spoken, though, with the superintendent on camera today. We spoke with him by phone uh, yesterday, uh, hoping, though, to get an interview with him at some point. Hoping to hear more. Certainly a very busy day for them in Utica, I think, as they work at all these details. Alex, thanks. Time now for the latest news around the state tonight in your New York Minute. New from Rochester, the parents of a man missing for seven years are footing the bill for two investigators to attend a national training conference to learn more about how to respond to missing and unidentified people. Their son, 19-year-old Brian Sullivan, was last seen at a Burger King in 2007. It's opportunity, of course, to get Brian's name out there. Um, it's it's hard because you know he was older when he went missing, and but we just hope that somebody will say, oh yeah, I, I remember seeing that car, or I remember somebody saying that they did something to Brian. Maybe didn't mention his name, but we we know something happened to him. Sullivan's vehicle, a 1995 red Pontiac Sunfire, was found a few blocks from the Burger King. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. New tonight, restaurant servers, bartenders, and delivery drivers are asking the state to raise the $5 minimum wage for tipped workers to a full minimum wage of $8. As it stands right now, these jobs aren't subject to minimum wage because their income includes gratuities. The state's minimum wage is set to, be, is set to increase to $9 by the end of the year. As part of an invasive species awareness week designed to highlight the ways gardeners, boaters and others can stop the spread of non-native animals and plants that destroy ecosystems. Here in central New York, we've seen firsthand how the emerald ash borer destroys ash trees. It's hoped that if people can recognize the species, they will be able to fight off the spread. Well, it was just last week Hurricane Arthur raced up the East Coast behind only minimal damage. That's great news given how severe damage can be after hurricanes. The federal government has just announced a third round of disaster relief money, $2.5 billion for states hit hard by Superstorm Sandy in October of 2012. Cheryl Atkinson is on the Waste Watch Trail tonight to find out where some of those taxpayer billions go and where they don't. 20 months after Superstorm Sandy, it's slow going to rebuild hundreds of damaged properties in the small town of Point Pleasant, New Jersey. I'd say we're probably 20% uh, on repair. 
Mayor Bill Schroeder blames in part a maddening bureaucracy that led residents to put off rebuilding while they waited for federal guidelines. Guidelines that later disqualified them from getting help from New Jersey's $4.2 billion in Sandy aid because their income wasn't low enough. That almost took a year. So you're almost into like uh, January of 2014 when people realized they weren't getting any money. Yet disaster relief money went full speed ahead for an expense that's usually off limits. TV ads promoting tourism. This one, part of a series, features New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Because we're stronger than the storm. It turns out the government gave New Jersey and New York special waivers to spend some of their disaster money on tourism ads. Louisiana and Mississippi were granted the same special permission after Hurricane Katrina. Some people would say, what's wrong with state spending HUD money promoting tourism in places that have been hard hit? The money was specifically directed for restoration and recovery. Republican Senator Tom Coburn says disaster aid funds are meant to help those directly affected. Why is it a federal role that we take money from Oklahoma or Louisiana or California and send it to New Jersey so they can run ads to suck people out of those states to go to New Jersey. The Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, administers the $15.2 billion allocated for rebuilding from Sandy. It granted the waivers for tourism ads. Nobody there would agree to an interview. In a letter to Senator Coburn, a HUD official said, tourism support can be a useful recovery tool in a damaged regional economy that depends on tourism. Bet it is. In January, critics accused Christie of appearing in the taxpayer-funded Sandy ads to promote his re-election campaign, accusations he denies. Today, thousands of New Jersey residents are still waiting to find out if they'll get any Sandy relief money. Senator Coburn has asked HUD to stop allowing tens of millions of it to be spent on TV ads. As for Point Pleasant, they've learned that getting disaster relief money is easier said than done. Quite honestly, it was everyone had their, were, were shaking their heads and throwing their hands in the air. The townspeople will this rebuild, the mayor says, uh, just without much help from billions in federal disaster funds. Investigating Washington, I'm Cheryl Ackeson reporting. Remember, if you have an investigation you think is worthy of our Waste Watch team, you can email us, news at cnycentral.com. Coming up, our talk tonight, we all have items with expiration, sell-by, and use-by dates in our fridges right now. So what do they really mean, and how long is that milk good after the date? Finally, some new guidance on this, and we're talking about it straight ahead. Plus... Which do you use more, your landline or your cell phone? Do you even have a landline anymore? I'll tell you which age group is most likely to hang up on the idea of having a house phone. And as all of central New York remains under a severe thunderstorm watch tonight and warnings continue to pop up, a new one just issued in Onondaga County. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 